NFT, and today I will be presenting TDDAP scalable and cost effective cloud tier encrypted application. And we created NFTDAP in Nine Lies Data, which is R&D company located in Warsaw in Poland. And we specialize in storage, distributed systems, cloud computing, and our work today is related to our previous publications, especially Hydra Store, which we presented here back in 2009. Uh, and the main motivation for the research is the fact that uh, cloud tiering uh, with the duplication is getting more and more popular for backup data, especially it's very convenient way of uh, storing backups for a long time. Uh, and our goal was to exploit cloud, uh, cloud capabilities to provide important features such uh, as limitless scalability and also to provide major cost reductions. And we also had in mind that we want to develop something that will be uh, later used in NEC Hydra store. So uh, I will start with a short introduction uh, how uh, cloud tiering with the duplication is usually done. So you start with a local tier and it's a system where the data is already deduplicated. So data is kept as deduplicated blocks. And we want to move selected files uh, to the cloud in a way uh, in which data in the cloud is uh, also deduplicated. And after the files are moved to the cloud, we can also remove the files from the local tier to reclaim some, some space there. And there are multiple benefits of using cloud tiering with the duplication, especially due to the duplication. The cost of cloud storage is decreased and also the network throughput between the tiers is decreased. And the data is kept in the cloud, so it's available even if the local tier system fails. But the current, uh, current uh, uh, solutions of uh, cloud tiering with the duplication have some important limitations and drawbacks, especially they process the whole the duplication, the whole metadata processing on the side of the local tier. And the problem is that uh, it consumes the local resources and also uh, the size of the cloud tier is limited because the, the resources on the uh, local tier are constrained. And also the duplication between multiple local tier systems is, is impossible because each of the systems conduct the, the duplication on, on their own. Uh, and moreover, um, cloud provides many ways of decreasing the total cost of storing uh, data and the cost of computing. Uh, and basically there are multiple classes of cloud storage. Uh, and also there are, uh, a lot, there are techniques which allow to have computation extremely affordable. For example, there are spot instances which allow to decrease the cost of computation by, by 10 times in comparison to regular cloud instances. And therefore we designed NFTDDAP in the following way. So we start with a local tier, but now it can consist of multiple independent systems. Uh, and we've got the cloud tier uh, where we keep the, the duplicated data and metadata of the files, just as in other, uh, in other systems with, uh, with cloud tiering. And the important difference is that we do the deduplication as uh, batch processing in the cloud. So we only need to transfer some metadata between local tier and the cloud tier. And after that, we can only put the duplicated blocks in the cloud. Uh, after we put the, uh, the data in the cloud, we can of course restore it either to the local tier and in such case, uh, you don't need to download data which is already available in the local tier. And also you can do some kind of independent restore so we can uh, restore the data somewhere else if needed. And finally, if you want to remove some data from the cloud, uh, you need to conduct some garbage collection and you can do the garbage collection in the cloud uh, in order to find blocks which are no longer referenced by any of the, any of the files. Uh, and now I will present a typical deduplication flow on InfTDDAP to describe some interesting details. So we start with the local tier when the data is already deduplicated and we want to move selected files, let's say file C and file F to the cloud. And in the first step, the only things we need to do is moving the file recipes to the cloud and file recipes are kind of metadata which contain a list of fingerprints of blocks that comprises the, comprises the file. And after the file recipes are moved to the cloud, we can conduct the, uh, the deduplication. Uh, and in this process, we compare the recently uploaded file recipes with fingerprints of data which are already kept in the cloud. And in result, we've got a list of blocks that are needed to be uploaded. And in the next step, we can send the information which blocks are needed back to the local tier. And finally, we can upload the deduplicated data to, to the cloud. And uh, in result, we've got the deduplicated data in the cloud just as we, just as we wanted. 
Uh, and the core of the solution is our uh, batch processing for the duplication in the cloud. It's a distributed computation which parallelizes the work by spinning up uh, multiple cloud instances on demand on the ones it's needed. It's very efficient due to the path processing and uh, we can execute it occasionally, for example, only once a week. Uh, moreover, the spot instances can be used, so altogether the processing is uh, extremely affordable. You can process multi-petabytes data set for a couple of dollars. And basically, doing the batch processing is much different than what we typically like, expect and do in systems with uh, deduplication. Uh, and we decided to go with batch processing because it's well suited for the use case of cloud tiering. Because if you think about the whole process of tiering data to the cloud, uh, then uh, it takes some time because first of all, uh, the upload can take, uh, it can take up uh, many hours or day uh, def uh, depending on the data volume and also the throughput to the cloud. Also, if you do the, the whole tiering uh, in order to reclaim any space from the local tier, then you need to run the garbage collection in the local tier system, which can also take uh, some time. Uh, and typically, such kind of garbage collection in system with, with deduplication is also done on a scheduled basis. And finally, uh, our expected use case is tiering all their backups to the cloud. And with backups, we know the life cycle of the files based on the backup policy. And then we can simply like, do the batch processing a little bit earlier in order to like, uh, do the, the computation and don't disrupt the, the backup policy of, of each backup. And we wanted to make batch dedupe scalable. And here we present one of our experiments from our evaluation. And we simply doubled the size of computing uh, cluster and doubled the size of uh, data to deduplicate in the same time. And as you can see in all of the cases, the computing time is very similar. So it's more or less two hours. So we achieve uh, linear scalability. And before I move to the garbage collection algorithms, I need to introduce a few of our uh, in-cloud structures. So First of all, we uh, keep the, uh, the blocks with actual data in containers, for example, a thousand blocks per one container, uh, and that's to decrease uh, put at game request, and therefore we can decrease the cost of the whole solution. Uh, and as for the metadata, we've got two major, uh, major and most important metadata structures. So first, there is a fingerprint index, index, which simply contains a list of fingerprints of all blocks that are kept in the cloud. Uh, and also there are file recipes which contain uh, references to each of the, each of the blocks uh, kept in the container. And uh, so for example, if you want to restore a file, you can like uh, see the file recipe and you know the order of blocks in the file based on the recipe. And as you can see, the fingerprint index is expected to be much smaller than, finger, uh, than the, uh, the all uh, file recipes altogether. And that's because fingerprint index only contain unique entries and file recipes can like have uh, multiple references to the single block. Mm. So the garbage collection is very similar to the batch deduplication because it's also a distributed computation, but it consumes much more resources because it needs to process all of the file recipes that are available in the cloud, whereas the batch deduplication can only uh, process the fingerprint index and file recipes of, of files which were recently uh, uploaded to the cloud. So. Uh, on the one hand, it consumes more resources and it's uh, more expensive, but uh, you can execute the garbage collection typically less frequently than the batch duplication. So both algorithms in practice will cost, uh, co cost a similar amount of money. Uh, also, we wanted to achieve a similar running time of the batch garbage collection to other uh, algorithms in state-of-the-art deduplication systems. Mm. Yeah, and the, one of the main problems with uh, garbage collection in the duplication systems in the cloud is the fact that after such garbage collection, we'll have an, a container, and in such container, we'll have both live, live and uh, dead blocks. And we don't want to pay for the blocks which are no longer referenced. But on the other hand, uh, in cloud, rewriting con containers also, uh, also costs you. It's not free. So um, we need a kind of way to say when rewriting a container is actually profitable. And as you can see for backups, we typically know the backup expiration uh, date based on the backup policy. And therefore we can use the information. So what we do in our batch algorithm is that we propagate the information about the expiration date of each backup and we propagate it back to, uh, to each single block. And then we use this information 
uh, to uh, consider rewriting uh, containers only when it's uh, when you, uh, when it's uh, profitable, and we also realized that you can use very similar technique in order of using multiple classes of storage in the cloud. So in storage, typically you've got a hot storage where the cost of storing data per month is uh, a bit a, a bit higher, and also you've got cold storage where the cost of storing data is lower but uh, you've got some kind of minimal storage, uh, storage period. So for example, you need to keep uh, bytes at least for 90 days. Also, there are additional transfer fees, especially for restores, and the requests are more expensive. And what's very important here is that currently there are many cold storage services which offer exactly the same millisecond latency as hot storage. So you don't need to bother about the performance of restore from cold, uh, cold storage. You only need to like worry about the, the cost of the overall solution. And therefore we aimed to create a kind of uh, algorithm in which we can keep data in both hot storage and cold storage to bring uh, as big cost benefit as possible. And our batch algorithms were extended to choose between hot and cold storage, following uh, the, the, princi the principles that, first of all, in cold storage, uh, the minimal storage uh, duration uh, is introduced but as we know the expiration dates of each backup, we can use this information to choose uh, between hot and cold storage wisely. Also put requests are more expensive, but as the data is kept in containers, uh, so the, the cost uh, is much reduced. And for get requests and uh, the additional transfer fees for restores, uh, it's the fact, uh, like it depends on your re restore frequency and policy, how much you will, you will pay and therefore we proposed the following method that we expect administrators to estimate restore frequency of, uh, of backup. And then we propagate the information from backup to individual blocks. And after that, we needed to apply some kind of heuristics to uh, forecast future references of blocks because the characteristic of each block changes in the time. And there are more, uh, there are more uh, details on that uh, in the paper. Uh, but as you can see in our evaluation, uh, this mixing storage uh, brings uh, some benefits because uh, if there are no reads, uh, all of the data uh, is kept in the cold storage. If there are very, like many, many reads, uh, then most of the data is uh, kept in the hot storage. And in cases in between, uh, you've got a huge, uh, huge benefit from mixing the, uh, mixing the storage classes. Uh, okay, and to sum up, uh, we introduced uh, InfTDDAP, which is another cloud native architecture for dealing with the duplication. Uh, the, the duplication is done entirely in the cloud, which means that there is no scaling limit. And also you can duplicate data between multiple local tier systems. Uh, and uh, our, uh, our uh, batch processing algorithms are highly efficient. So you can deduplicate petabytes of data for a couple of dollars. And finally, we uh, also introduced uh, techniques for further cost reductions, especially by mixing hot and, and cold storage. And that's all, so thank you for your attention. And uh, now I'm open for questions. <laughs>